Can you see my phone on the table there? Um, no, because we'll have food and breakfast and stuff. And... It's just, I, I don't like having papers on the table. What's the big thing that we want out of it? How are you? You can see you okay? Good to see you. How are you? Nice to meet you. Okay, hi, you okay? Are we just debating? Have you, did you play 18 times for United or 30? I don't know. <laughs> 18 it was. 18. 18. Wow, that's a 18. lot. 18. <laughs> that's, that's a long two years in Manchester. I got yeah. <laughs> True, true, true. Uh, where did you live in Manchester? Where did you live when you came? Hale, the place to be. The place to be is Hale, right? <laughs> where uh, all the posh people live in Manchester. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, where about so he, he rents Roy, the house? Roy also lives there, I think, right? Yes, uh, yeah. So that's why the posh people... Yeah, all the, all the football <laughs> players live in Hale. Right, thank you. When you see players, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I'm doing it. You need to learn. Servus, thank you. Servus, Yeah. <laughs> it's not a particular... And mir san mir, very important. What's this one? Mir, mir, san mir, mir san mir. Yeah. Which is which? What's that mean? Uh, that's we are, we are. Yes. We are, we are. That's uh, written in the Jersey of Bayern Munich here. Ah, okay, mir san mir. What happened that summer? You want to know? I trained with the under 16 team. Other players playing in your position, and you actually think, I think that I'm actually better than this guy. I mean, Pep is incredible. I knew. Yeah. That I'm physical stronger than them. Yeah, yeah. Xavi, Iniesta. It was actually all there. But you just needed to put the puzzle together. Why are you looking so scary? What's that? Just a white sausage. <laughs> the white <laughs> bush. <laughs> oh, you get spoiled, scary. <laughs> and what's this? This is a milky mustard. Sweet, yes. Sweet one. I want to talk about Manchester United. How did that come about? You were at Bayern, you've been here all your life. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the call comes from Manchester. Who, who makes that first call to you? Uh, actually, you have to start with, you know, when you were, and for sure it happened to you as well, but when, when, you, when you played for United and you were sitting at the massage table and Rod was giving you a massage or whatever, and then former players came in who played abroad and they spoke about how nice it is to be abroad, the experience and yes. all this stuff. Yeah. I had the same. So I had like those players who came came to Bayern to visit and spoke about it. So you're kind of curious a little bit always. So, but um, for me, my dream was always to win the Champions League with Bayern Munich. That's why I was working the whole time, yeah. like uh, in my life actually. And then the dream became true. And then there was a moment when you had a feeling, okay, m maybe you you just feel want to feel something different. Yeah and see something different. And when we faced Old Trafford, I always said, like, this stadium, this is amazing. Like, the fans, I remember one, one day, we lost actually 3-2 against United, but we... In the second game of I, the, yeah. Robin, you went through the way. Exactly, Robin scored this, that goal. Yeah. But when we left the pitch, and you, you know, like, you pass by the, yeah. the, the supporters, and they gave us standing ovations. Yeah. And I have never experienced that somewhere else. Yeah. And uh, so that was always stuck in my mind. Of course, when I was young, I was also actually, I had like jerseys of United uh, uh, back home. I was okay. a fan of Cantona, my brother is a huge yeah. United fan as well. So I always said, if I once going to leave Bayern yeah. Munich, it has to be Manchester United. And then when Louis van Gaal took over and he was asking me if, if I could imagine like playing for United. Yeah. And also if you see the circumstances in that year, 2015, um, Liverpool was not as strong, no. Chelsea, City was not as strong. So the moment to win a trophy yeah, was, was there. The like, chance. you know, like it's different than maybe yeah, now. Yeah. So, and I decided I actually to join United, which was amazing. I, I enjoyed it so much. What was your first impressions when you got into the club? Compared the, to Munich and where you'd been? The training facilities or you talk about Everything, stadium? everything. So people, amazing, how polite and everything. Yeah. Like, uh, that was fantastic. Um, Stadium, walking on the pitch, nothing better, nothing yeah. better than that. Facilities, actually a little bit like, not as modern than I expected, to be honest. Yeah. I think they rebuilt it. T yeah. yeah, they're a bit tired probably. They, they were, they were Carrington would have been 15 years old yeah. when you arrived. 
Yeah, something like that. But of course, it was hard for me to live my 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 childhood club. Yeah. So I remember also the first day when I arrived at Manchester. Yeah. And then we had actually the, the US tour, and I had to say bye to my wife and to my friends. Like it's the first time. Yeah. Like you, ha I had some tears in my eyes, you know. Yeah. But uh, um, but that's why I'm saying the people they really um, helped me to settle in very well. Who who who, who struck you straight away? That's yeah, Wayne. Wayne was there. Wayne Rooney. Yeah. Uh, Ashley uh, Young, Young. Michael Carrick. Yeah. Um, Phil Jones, Chris Smalling. Yeah. I actually was always close to the English player, so when we had, yeah. when you sit on the table, I probably would have been with you on the table. <laughs> but we are different age. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> but that's interesting because obviously, since Sir Alex Ferguson left, the, the thinking is that for 10 years, 12 years, it's been failure. But actually, in the season that you were there, you won the FA Cup in that season, first season, yeah? Yeah, yes. So it, it wasn't all failure, and that did you enjoy that first season? Very much until January. Yeah. But then I got a three-game suspension, which I still don't understand why. Actually, three uh, games I was suspended, and we were, I think we were first. Yeah. We were first on the table. I think Leicester was either equal or like yeah. below. But then when I got banned, these three matches, I was. Um, I think we didn't. We made like two points in that three matches, we lost yeah. a little bit. And then I got my injury. Yeah. And that that was a huge problem because uh, I actually, we faced in Liverpool after, so I actually was injured. I knew straight away there's something yeah. happened. And when you when you look at the foul uh, or like at the tackle, it was not really a foul, but you, you could see like, uh, that's not really just a small thing. And uh, and then the problem started a little bit, yeah. And, and in that first season, I I struggled, I mean, I, I said this publicly, I struggled with the football that Louis van Gaal played at Manchester United because you talked before about the principles and values mm. of a club or a country with Germany. I think Manchester United have those values in terms of speed, attacking, and Louis' style of play was... Controlling. Control the whole game. I found it very difficult as a Manchester yeah. United fan, obviously played for the club. I found it very difficult to watch. Obviously, you played under Louis van Gaal twice. Yeah. Exactly. Did you, did you like the football that Louis van Gaal played? And believe it or not, in Munich it was the same. The people in Munich all did say the they same. They like it. No, yeah, they, they, they had to adjust to it. Adjust let's say to it, way. yeah. But he was actually, like the way he changed the football in Munich actually the most, the most with okay. his way. So actually, the, the, still the club plays in the 4-3-3. Yeah. Like, and he established that actually. He was the one who put me as a, from the winger to number six, actually. Yeah. Um, and brought up like young players like Thomas Müller, yeah. Holger Badstuber, same like Jesse Lingard, yeah. Rashford. He gave the chances to those players. Yeah. But sometimes uh, some young players um, are not making that step, you know, like yeah. Rashford does or did or, or Lingard, yeah. you know. So you have... He didn't spend so much money, to be honest, at Munich and also at Manchester United, I remember, like... He likes, to promote, he likes to promote young players. Exactly, or to give them a chance, yeah. you know. And it's not always working, but um, for a club, actually, that's also the question. You're going to go that way, or yeah. you do it like Chelsea and you buy Slatan, Pogba, and then for a lot yeah. of money. So, But um, the way the game, how he sees it, um, it's, of course, with a lot of risk yeah. as well against the ball. Yeah. But... It was working a lot, I think. And if you go back and you and and check the first, let's say uh, the first part of a season, yeah, uh, from summer to January, yeah, I don't know if someone in the past of the coaches had more success than him yeah. in that year. So it just it just turned after Christmas. Yeah. And then what happened that summer? Jose comes in. What happens then? You want to know? So on my birthday, first of all, because I came to United and we had with 2016 with Germany national team, we went far to the semifinals. Yeah. So I came also, stepped in uh, a little bit later. The team was uh, has been in the US uh, tour, I think. So when I came first day, I actually uh, trained with Slatan. He was also there. And I was like, oh, great. A player who is like has the vision and amazing to play with. Yeah. And then uh, next day on my birthday, when I walked in, uh, came to Carrington, uh, John Murtha was there and he said, oh, you're not allowed to 
walk into the dressing room. And I said, why? And I said, uh, he said, yeah, the coach uh, said so. So, okay. And I said, well, without well, any warning? Nothing. No warning, nothing. But you got to walk into the dressing room? Yes. What? He just stood there and told me that. John Murta? Yeah. And then, uh, he, it was also not easy for him to tell me, I must say. I saw. But why, did, why would he tell you? I don't know. And Jose just didn't want you in the dressing room? <laughs> yeah. What did, you, what, did you, what did you do on that first day? <laughs> yeah, I was with, like... With Zlatan. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. First day I was training. So someone could have told me there, you know, no problem. Or explain it to me just like in a, in a, in a normal way. But um, okay, I, I went to the youth dressing room. I've changed there and I trained oh, with they the so under they kicked, sorry, they, kicked, they kicked you out of the first team dressing room? Yeah. yeah. Completely? Yeah, <laughs> completely. So I, even, I had to ask him to bring me my cleats and training skier, for example, to train then with... I asked like, okay, with who I'm training? And then he said like, there's the under 16 team. So I trained with the under 16 team. Was this made public at the time? No. Okay, but then actually, did Josie I, speak? Josie must have spoken no, to I, you. No, I said to him, look, can I talk to the manager like in the afternoon or something? And he's like, okay, I will ask him. Anyway, when I came back from the under 16 uh, training, um, did you train well? <laughs> I trained so bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like thinking, what's going on? Is it a joke or is like something going on here? And uh, and then actually had a meeting with him after in the afternoon. Yeah. And uh, what happened? No, he just explained to me that that uh, he didn't uh, see me happy here at United because when I had my injury, I did my rehab with the German doctors, for example, and uh, I spent time uh, then in Germany. Of course, I came uh, back to United and was in a conversation or contact with the doctors, and and I watched the games. So that was the, I had with Louis van Gaal the conversation when he was the coach. He said like, look, come on the weekends to United, be in contact with the doctor and do your rehab. You need to be fit, you know, because there was yeah. the FA Cup final, so, yeah, yeah. which I almost could have played. But, yeah. uh, so that was our day and, and our agreement. So I just kept to the agreement, you know. Do you think and, they uh, thought that you just got ready for Germany and dismissed United? Maybe, and maybe, but for me, uh, it was just the, the, the thing to get healthy and to be able to, to to play as soon as I could have played, as bad as it would have been for my national team tournament as well. I didn't start the first game or the second yeah. game, or, you know. So, so I kept to the, uh, I stick to the agreement with Louis van Gaal, and uh, yeah. But obviously, <laughs> obviously, uh, then uh, maybe the board or uh, uh, thought a little bit differently about that. I don't did know, did anybody more... else? Uh, anybody else get moved to the under 16 just you? No, no, no. It was just me. Just you. And then actually, after that, I was training alone for at least three months with a fitness guy. Who was uh, that? Paolo. So I trained always so before the team Jose trained. Never or after. let you train with the first team. No. Why? I don't know. I've never. Made, I, no, I guess they wanted to get rid of me. You know, like. Uh, oh, I get that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's I mean, pretty obvious. But, I mean, but there is a way to do things. Exactly. Exactly. But um, in that moment, actually, I was like, okay, good. But I still was super happy at United. I loved to wear the jersey. I loved it. You know, like, and I was saying, okay, maybe it's a period. I will train now. I keep myself fit, and maybe one day. They changed their will, mind. My, my, my dream was always to step back at the Old Trafford, you know. How so, were the players with you, by the way? Because I, mean, no, I, you, I, you, I didn't see them. <laughs> Sometimes I passed by a few or I got a message, but... Um, but you said those players that were looked after yeah, you yeah, when yeah. you first arrived, yeah. they, they must have kept in contact with you and sort of yeah, said... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they said they didn't understand, but I don't know. Like, they didn't understand the decision and stuff. So, um, yeah, so but what? I didn't see them, actually, because I literally had to train in the morning or after their session to not see them. So it was, and then sometimes... You know that's illegal. <laughs> no, it's not allowed. Okay. I mean, I don't uh, know. what I'm saying to you is that I'm not... I, okay, for me... Got, <laughs> I, I, I was a PFA union rep. You're not allowed actually to do that. Okay. You're not. 
it, it, you're not allowed to dismiss someone from the. It's constructive dismissal in some ways. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to go into employment law with you, but yeah. <laughs> I will for a second. <laughs> Thank you. You know, it, it, it's it, good it, to know. Oh. No, but it, it's probably a few years too late. You probably should have come and seen me at the time. Yeah. But I, I'm stunned at what I'm hearing. I'm embarrassed actually. Because yeah. I always think that, look, players leave clubs. Players left the club when I was at Manchester United. But you do it with, well, look, sometimes it can be an angry. Because sometimes it can be a problem where a player and a manager fall out and it has mm. to, and, and a player leaves. But there's a way to do things. There's a way to behave. There's yeah. a way to act. I was not happy, obviously. And I was also very sad because, uh, like I said, I, I really... Manchester United is my second club in my heart, you know? So uh, I was really there with... Everything and I and I think I gave a, a lot, like everything, when I played as well. So that's why I was like uh, very sad, actually, how I got treated. But I'm not this kind of person who is then running to the media and talk about it and try to say something and just be like the complicated guy and like to focus on that uh, thing. That on football, you know, it was more important for me to be to behave like I did and. Uh, I said to myself, okay, listen, do your job, train, and maybe one day you get a chance. Did you go back. back and see anyone else? Did you go and see anyone and say, look, come on, this is not right? You, you know, did you go and see Jose again? Did you go and see John Murtagh again? Did you speak no, to Ed them? Woodward was back in the days, of course. You like, spoke to Ed? We had also the, uh, well, my agent also spoke to him, but it, the decision was made. Did you go and speak to Ed? I spoke later to him, yes, but for me, for example, it was very hard to see them because I knew it was not only Jose's decision, it was also the club's decision. So it came from above Jose, you think? I mean, uh, I guess so, because Jose, actually, when we spoke, like, he knows me as a player, you know, and uh, when he was working for Realo into Milan, like, there were some uh, interactions as well, so... I think it was both a little bit, but um, it... uh, Yeah, it hurt me, obviously, when he was saying that I'm not happy here and... uh, because that was not true, I was very happy mm. at United and uh, it was just, I was unhappy because of my injuries, yeah. you know. Do you think, do you think this, t- I mean, th- I'm hearing this type, of, well, I think everyone's hearing it for the first time. Do you think this sort of explains culturally, you know, everyone talks about in the last 10 years, Manchester United's culture mm-hmm. is bad. That, you know, it's, you know, great managers have gone there and failed. Great players have gone there and underachieved. Mm. I, said it, I said it becomes a graveyard for for good players, does this type of thing explain this instance? Explain you think why that culture? Because I always think if you do something like that to Bastian Schweinsteiger, that every other player must think, well, if they can do it to him, imagine what they're going to do to me. Maybe maybe it's that that you kind of you do it just to make a, a statement, you know, for the rest of the group. Maybe that's it. But uh, I didn't understand the way. You know, like you could have done it like also differently, you know. Um, speak to me normal, but not in that way. But um, uh, yeah, in the end of the day, I must also say that uh, after the three months training on my own, uh, one day, uh, Jose or his assistant, uh, Rui? Rui? Yeah. I think Rui. Uh, he came to me and said like, look, uh, you can train with us. To train from tomorrow with us. Then I trained with them. And actually, I think I trained well. So because, you know, when you play then with Paul Pogba, you know, I like to play with him, with Zlatan, you yeah. know, that was, uh, there was Why a connection. Why did they change their mind after three months? I think that they haven't had their best uh, games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, season was a little bit tough. <laughs> And maybe they wanted also to have an impact uh, on the training uh, f- field as well yeah. first. So, uh, yeah, I did that. And then later on, like, I got my minutes, but still it was sometimes when you see other players playing in your position and you actually think, I think that I'm actually better than this guy. I can give who's much in, more. Who's, it, who's, in, who's in your position there? You know, you know. <laughs> no, who was it? it was obviously Pogba. No, we was had it? we had uh, Paul, we had uh, Ander Herrera, we had Michael Carrick, we had Snyderlin, Fellaini. Yeah. So and I thought that I'm not the last one in that group, you know, like for that position. Yeah. So, and when you train, you see, and uh, you know, the big players, they they also see it immediately, you know. Yeah. So, uh, 
but then I actually played a few more minutes and stuff. But um, and also Jose, he apologized and uh, and. Uh, well, he, told, said, he said sorry to you for the, what had happened. Yeah, he said in the end, like, in the end, actually, he said, um, when I just, wait, first I need to tell you, for me it was not easier than sometimes being sitting there after a game and then people came in and uh, from the board and, and they came to shake the hands. That was for me not easy because I was thinking, um, you guys actually treated me not like a gentleman, like not... Like normal in my eyes, so I f I could feel in my heart. So when the board came in, yeah, because at United the directors coming after the match correct, to shake out. Correct. You, yeah, he thought so, that was. So my heart was not anymore so full of red. Wasn't there? Yeah, but it, it can't be. Can it, it? it was a little bit broke, like because no one said uh, apologized, you know, uh, until then actually. The first time when someone uh, apologized was then when I decided to leave United to America. And I asked Jose if uh, I can do that. He said to me uh, that he apologized for the way he treated me uh, in the beginning, and uh, and uh, he could not. Uh, he had to let me go because he could not uh, do something against my decision again. You know, like so he could not say no to me in that moment. You think that team would, was good enough? You just don't think. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. One hundred percent. I would love to see him in a in a better team. I call him. One of the best midfielders I've played with. People have this perception of what uh, Paul Pogba was like at Manchester United, but what was he like in that time that you were there when you played? I call him one of the best midfielders I've played with. Yeah. I think you could see it definitely when he was playing at the French national team. You could see which kind of potential he has when he has the right team around him. So I enjoyed playing with him so much. Him and Slatan. Yeah. Wayne. That was so nice. We had the right pieces. Yeah. But what was it that was missing? Or was it just that City <laughs> was so <laughs> that we played together? <laughs> <laughs> it was actually all there. But you just needed to put the puzzle together. And what was the I mean, what, what would what would you have done? What would be the team that you would have picked? I would have You're picked. You're the coach for, for, for David two minutes. De Gea, Valencia. Um, okay, backline was not that important. Uh, <laughs> left Luke Shaw. Yeah, you could play with Chris Smalling or Phil Jones or yeah. uh, Rojo. Or, but then uh, left Luke Shaw. Uh, midfield Pogba, Schweinsteiger, maybe uh, Carrick or, or up front Rooney, Ibrahimovic. That's enough. Rashford. You think that team would, was good enough? You just don't think it was Hundred percent, one hundred percent. If you need long balls, put Fela in, in. Bring long balls. You can do that if you want. It's interesting because obviously you've you've been successful all the way through your career. You've seen World Cup finals, Champions League finals, title wins. That your belief was there that Manchester United could be good enough. One thousand percent. So what was the problem then? Just the, the, what, what was the issue? What is the issue? <laughs> Everyone's trying to put the no. I, I, Everyone's trying to put the finger on why Manchester United is not successful over these years of Louis Van Gaal, mm. Jose Mourinho, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Of course, sometimes you spend the money completely wrong. You have to adapt also how football is uh, is changing or not changing. And the easiest example, and where actually United should have learned out of it, is just, I don't know how, how far is, how many miles is Liverpool away from United? 45 miles. Exactly. Just look over there. What did Klopp do? Did, did he sign a lot of huge money transfers? No. Look where he got Robertson. The same he did like in other players. The same he did at Borussia Dortmund. He found Lewandowski, he found Götze. He found yeah. Hummels, Piszczek, Blazikowski, Gundogan, all those players. Yeah. Royce. See the recruitment, basically. Just have to look 45 miles aside and, and just uh, see how they do it. And they are dominating since how long now? Oh, they've had a, seven or eight years. I mean, obviously, yeah. Pep, Pep's but, dominated, but they've, done, they've had a but great it's, seven or eight it's, years. it's stable, it's up there. Yeah. And it doesn't have no. a wave like United does. Talk to me about Marcus Rashford. I would love to see him in a, in a better team, where he gets the balls in the right moment. I would love to see that. Because in the years, in the past, you don't really see that, you know? So if he would play for a different team, 
maybe he would also increase his level a little bit more. He's still like the player who can decide the games, but he doesn't show it too many times because maybe he's also inside a little bit frustrated how it is, you know? Do you think um, he needs to leave? Or do you think he needs to just get better players at Manchester United? I think, I think that, first of all, he has to understand he can also be the example, you know? Like, you can handle frustration also differently. Yeah. But someone needs to tell him and speak with him, you know? And also, uh, it has to come from his own. That's very important. Sometimes you have these coaches who tell you, stay left, stay right, but you need to understand. If you play for Pep Guardiola, you need to understand what he wants. And, uh, and then you have to do it. Yeah. But uh, you cannot just go to someone and say, hey, I run faster or decide the games. You need to, to help him and he needs to understand why. But you played against Paul Scholes, mm -hmm. Frank Lampard, yeah. and Steven Gerrard. And they're all exceptional players. Yeah, that's true. And this, this debate in England around who is the best? <laughs> Scholes, Lampard, Gerrard. Because when there was three of them, mm. Gerrard and Lampard played in the centre and Scholes got moved to the left. And there's this debate about, mm. what's your thoughts on that? Because they're all great in different ways. They are, they are very good players, all three of them. Um, all in a, in, a, in a different way, I must say. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you know, for example, Paul Scholes much more than I know. I maybe know a little bit more about Frank Lampard because I faced him a little bit more often. Yeah. So when you face someone in a game, yeah. you know more or less how good he is or not, right? Yeah. And when you train with someone, even more. Yeah. Like, uh, so that's why it's for me tough to say about Steven Gerrard. You know, I played against him in the English national team, but not, not too many times, to be no. honest. Um, so I can't really say who, who is the best one of all three of them. I rise them very, very, very high. And uh, that's why it's probably unfair to pick, out, pick, pick someone from, from them. They will dominate the league immediately and the game will change also in England. Have you been critical in the past of how everyone's changed? He's a genius. The German football was number one in the world. you played under great managers and not many people have played under Pep Guardiola, Hankers, Lou van Gaal, Jose Mourinho. Um, Otmar Hitzfeld. Otmar Hitzfeld. Yeah. Great managers, some of the, you can love. Some of the great managers in the last 20, 25 years, in history actually, of the game. Unfortunately not Sir Alex. Not Sir Alex, yeah. no. But you played under the, some of the great managers that have won everything. If you were a manager now, who would you most be like? Probably Jupp Heynckes, probably Jupp Heynckes, because what I liked on him is that, you know, you have these managers and they have their style, they have their rituals and... Uh, yeah. And Jupp Heynckes, I remember when we lost 2012, the Champions League final against Chelsea, and we lost also a cup final against Dortmund and we lost the league also, even if we were nine points leading by time, by one moment. Um, he was able to change his approach to the team in his age. His style of play or his... Yeah, like in small things, like he 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 changed a little bit, also the style, but also we changed also a few players, but he adapted more. He was more listening to the, to the team. The conversation was even closer. Okay. And uh, I appreciate that very much. You don't see that so many times when you have, a, like you said, like this high profile yeah, coach. Yeah. And he has, he has been able to, to change his own personality almost, yes. like a little bit, yeah. you know, to be able to, to have success. And then literally like the next season we won the triple. So, so, you, so you, you, adapt, you, you like the fact that you could adapt. Whereas if you play under, I, mean, I imagine, I've not played under Louis van Gaal or Pep Guardiola, but they have their set style of play yeah. and nothing changes. You need to have good reasons to... <laughs> To change a little bit, yeah, true. So you can't come up to Louis van Gaal and, and just say like, can we do this and this? You need to really prove it. And, uh, and, and but you know, that's why I, I appreciate very much that Jupp Heynckes was able to, to do that. And uh, in his, I, I think he was, I don't remember how old he was by that time, or 65 yeah, or something. Old, yeah, and yeah. you know, like his uh, list is also <laughs> quite yeah. interesting as a player and as a coach. Uh, 
about his his success. So that's why I would, from the personality point, yeah, I would definitely take your pinkers. If you talk about maybe tactics and and all this stuff, I mean Pep is incredible. Yeah, I think you know when I when I actually played for United and I heard that Pep will leave Bayern Munich and he signed for City, I was like, okay, they will dominate the league immediately and the game will change also in England the way the people will will watch uh, Pep's style and try to copy. You were critical, of, have you been critical in the past of how everyone's changed? Because obviously mm -hmm. the German style pre-Pep mm -hmm. wasn't, it was, I always thought that when I played against Bayern Munich, it was always a physical battle. It was quick players, strong players, it's always six foot three defenders, big. Whereas with Pep, obviously it became very, very technical. Did, did you like that transition or not? <clears throat> so my, I spoke once about it, and I think not some people didn't understand what I'm try what I tried to say. <laughs> but uh, 2012, 2013, 2014, I think that Bayern was probably the best team in Europe, and the national team we were yeah. we won the World Cup, so we were very high. And uh, and then Pep came to Munich, and uh, obviously not easy, you know, when you're a coach and you come to a country and, and a club where you're the number one in Europe or yeah. in the world. Um, but he had his style of football, which is amazing. Like when we played Barcelona, it's difficult, of course. Yeah. And he tried to uh, impact, obviously, his way. And it's he's a genius. Like yeah. the ideas which he gives to the players and how doing the game as well, uh, it's amazing. But what happened is, is that a lot of other clubs or even the national team tried to copy. Yeah. And it's happening in England. We, we focused more on, on, on that style than keeping the values so of the Germans, which you already uh, yeah. spoke about. And I think that we forgot completely about our DNA. And we trusted a lot that, uh, that way of Pep, which is very good. And wow, we won everything. And, yeah. But um, that was more or less a little mistake of German football, I would say. It's interesting you and call it a strange. mistake. Yes, because we, we focus too much on, on his style yeah. and forgot actually about the DNA and the values of we were, I think, also... Uh, like, I don't know, you, you tell me, how, you, how did you see... What was the, uh, the the words which you described the German football of 2014 or, or 13 when Bayern won the Champions League? I would say resilient, strong, aggressive, counter-attack, um, but also set pieces, hard to play against, um, win the games, winning mentality. Um, that would be how I would see German football, German in, in, in that period. And then after, the next years, let's say from yeah. 2016 to 2000 and, uh, oh, no. Qatar. I, when you see uh, Lam playing in central midfield and going in there and you see all the things that happen, no, I've, we've seen exactly the same thing in England. Mm. I, I actually am on the same page as you. I, if you watch Pep's Manchester City play against, I'm trying to think of a team in our league. Liverpool? No, not Liverpool, against the lower teams. Oh. It's not very exciting because he just they keep the ball for seventy five percent of the time. It's mm. too easy for them. It's brilliant. You, you can't, you've got to marvel at the genius, as you say, of how he's done it. But then you see in League Two or in the Championship, you see centre backs now on mm. the six yard box and the goalkeeper passing it to the centre back. And I'm thinking, I don't know why we've done exactly the same in England. Yeah. It's been a positive impact, I have to say, but everyone is trying to copy it. Yeah. And now Pep's playing with four centre backs in his defence, and Haaland. So he's he's actually changed his style again to a more aggressive style. Exactly. And everyone's still trying to copy the old style. And, and that that is where I see that he also learned out of it because when he won the Champions League, you could see how the defenders were defending. Yeah. Well, he's changed. Like, he changed in the last two years. When you saw Jones playing as as a six, you yeah. know, for example. Yeah. And how he was. Of course, playing with a ball, but more about the defensive way, yeah. and that has changed. He was, yeah. I think, he he learned out of the the, the time also in Munich, yeah. how it was, and maybe the, the first years at City. What does he need actually to win the Champions League? Yeah. It's also having defensive strengths, and I think that City has got it and has changed it. But what I tried to say is that uh, the German football was 
number one in the world and um, we have lost our our values or we focused not anymore so much on our values and you, trusted you, a, a little bit more uh, uh, other things. You won, you won the treble with uh, Jupp Heynckes. Jupp Heynckes, yes. You win the World Cup, obviously with Jochen Love, and then Pep comes in and you change the style of play. That's what you're describing here, isn't it? We we changed, like not only like Bayern Munich, even the other teams in the Bundesliga yeah. or a uh, national team, you kind of adapted to it. Yeah. Because obviously Pep's way is great, yeah. you know, like like... The positioning and 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 the thing, a lot of great things, you know, but I think also that you cannot play always in one half, yeah. like high up, like it's impossible. It's it's very or it's very very difficult. Yeah. And uh, and I always said like uh, Pep trained in Barcelona. He had eleven actors on the field, yeah. and uh, he, he had a movie, and he he tries to do the same movie. In Munich or in Manchester City, but sometimes the actors are changing, you know. So yeah. that's a little bit uh, the tough thing for him. But um, I would never say that Pep is is a, was bad for Bayern Munich or something like this. Yeah. He was actually amazing. Like I wish we would have uh, a coach like him uh, in Munich uh, again. When I used to play against Bayern Munich, there were I used to think about giants when I used to play against football clubs. And I used to think Bayern Munich. It, what used to impress me was the coach. You used to have the coach branded with the bike. You used to have your own coach. We never had our own coach at Manchester United. You know, the bus that you travel no. to games in. Yeah. Bayern Munich had their own coach. It was Everything was sort of like big, it felt, when you came to play Bayern Munich. And you've got this big boardroom of Uli Heines, Karl Heinz room. You go, how is that dynamic work at the club? Because they're still there now, aren't they? They try to, they try. They are still there. You're playing, yeah. uh, you're playing against Karl Heinz Rummenigge and Uli Heines, they're still they there. They go on forever at, at the club. Is <laughs> Is it a good thing still that they're there, or is it? It is, it is, it is, it is. I think it's first of all very important to have those kind of um, people who actually also played on that high level. Yeah. Uh, on the board. So we we admire the Bundesliga in England for its ownership structure. Mm -hmm. You know the fact that the fans have a real say in the club, but. There is this problem of Bayern Munich winning the league. I mean, this is probably not the right time to ask this question because Leverkusen are going to win the league. But eleven times in a row, we, for me, that for us as well, we we admire the fan ownership, but then we think it kills the league. How do you mm. see this when you're over it? When you obviously are a Bayern Munich fan, that this eleven is unhealthy. It's anti-competitive. Do you see it that way? Not as much. Not as much. I think that. Bayern Munich, obviously, like financially, they're very strong. Like, yeah. Of course, if we would like to buy a player from Leverkusen, we, Bayern Munich can do that. Yeah. Easily, and um, and we have done that actually in the past. Look, like Lewandowski, uh, yeah. Götze, Hummels, they all played then for Bayern Munich yeah. in the end. Um, but still, I believe that in certain games, it was possible that someone else could have beat Bayern Munich, but they haven't done it. Like like I said, like the last. Three, four years, maybe there were like moments in the league yeah. where Bayern Munich struggled and the other teams didn't really use it. Yeah. And Leverkusen now is using it. And yeah. uh, so that was also the truth. You said there about Bayern Munich can take usually whoever they want from another club, but they've tried to get Bundesliga wise. Bundesliga, yeah. 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 But you tried to get Alonso, but he said yeah. no? I think so, yeah. What's your, what's your take on that? I, th I don't know, like. It's also like not easy to step in into a coaching role at Bayern Munich. Expectations yeah. are very, Expectations very high. Are high yeah. yeah, but um, I also actually thought that he might think about the Liverpool uh, situation as yeah. well. But Wait. also, maybe it's also uh, smart not to step into the footsteps of Jurgen Klopp. Klopp yeah. So, and with Leverkusen, if he will win the the league, he might win the the cup. Yeah, and uh, he is still in the Euro League, so. It's not, and then to play next year Champions League and the, and the way how they play, yeah, uh, they can go far in the Champions League for sure. So, yeah. um, and still he is a young coach. He has time to to be coach in, in one of the best uh, clubs in the world yeah. in the future for sure. So what I see, I have to talk about it. If it's good or bad, exactly how I feel. <laughs> if, I, if I get the ball played into me, I'm back to goal. I'll be like, get <laughs> let them come. They lost the ball and we killed them.
Did you like the sausage or not? Oh, I liked it. It was a bit, um, it yeah. wasn't my New, experience. Uh, it's, yeah, uh, different. Lighter. A bit like lighter, a. Lighter, yeah. The, 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 yeah, lighter, a bit more. Um, it boiled. I, was, I wasn't yeah. surprising, but I wasn't expecting boiled sausage. I was expecting this big giant. Mm. The bratwurst. Br yeah, mm. that's what I was expecting. So this is the breakfast sausage, is it? Mm -hmm. Like a speciality. So here in Munich, it's, uh, it's the breakfast sausage, yes, actually, yeah. yeah. Mm. You remember the chef with the gray hair? Mike. Is he still there? Mike the chef, no, he yeah. left. He left. He's a good oh. guy, eh? Yeah, Mike the chef. He was, great. he was great. Did he do the sponge, the sponge after yeah. with the custard? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I must say, that's what, that's what really, um, I, I really like, like, they were all so nice, so polite, and even the people on the street, when they, they ask you, like, oh, can I, is it okay to bother you, can I have a autograph yeah, yeah. or something? Yeah. They don't make a hiding no. uh, camera snap and, and, or something. And United fans, they don't really boo the team, they don't really mm -hmm. criticise, they, they get upset, but they don't, they're very good in and the stadium. And they have plenty of reasons for it, actually. Oh, right? they could have been, yeah, but they never really turn on the team, they always yeah. back the team, they... Yeah, that, that's amazing. Oh, it's been difficult the last 10 years. Because you're on television. You know, you're on television now. Mm. And sometimes you have to be critical of your own club. Mm. It's difficult. How do you handle that? You need to be... So what I see, I have to talk about it. If it's good or bad. Exactly, so I feel. That's what you have to do, I think. Um, even if... Obviously, you, you always want to talk nice about it, but <laughs> sometimes... Yeah, but it is like... That's the same when I talk about... Kimmich, when I tell him, look, I needed to talk to you about that because Do you, you, tell you him gave after? me that. Yeah. You, so you, so you I re... see them, they're super nice. They, are, they <laughs> understand also, like Thomas, he also says, like, I understand. But okay. I also ask them what's their view, you know, like, yeah, yeah. And, uh, how they see it. But Do you like fullbacks going into midfield? Doing the game? Yeah. Sometimes, yes, but not non stop. Like, I understand when Dani Alves went in yeah. to just overload yeah. and then goes back, but. Um, but I think he's still a right fullback, you know. Yeah. You? I. You were not a cup of right fullback who went. No. <laughs> get me out of midfield. <laughs> if, I, if I get the ball played into me with my back to goal, I'll be like, get away. Yeah, but you had your strength somewhere else. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like... But Scolzi, Scolzi, um, your Paul Scholes, mm? he, yeah. po he posted on Instagram four weeks ago get them fucking fullbacks out of midfield. <laughs> yeah. I mean. <laughs> it, I understand, I understand, but uh, sometimes it creates overload and that's how actually yeah. Barcelona was very strong. Yeah, yeah. So when we, we faced Barcelona back in the days, yeah, I was like, Jesus, cool. why do they have 13 players on the field? <laughs> yeah, but they did those kind of moves, yeah. you know, and, uh, and then you as a midfield player were actually like, yeah. Jesus. I always, I always uh, told my wingers, look, if your right fullback moves into the centre, just follow him. Yeah. Because I'm not, in, I, I said to Jupp Heynckes, before we played, in 2013, we played Barcelona in the semi-finals. We beat them at home 4-0 and in Barcelona 3-0, I think. And I said to him, because I got smashed once very bad from Barcelona, yeah. I think 5-0 at Nou Camp. Yeah. And there was this game where I was like, I was in the midfield and I was like, <laughs> running and no, no chance to get the ball yeah, yeah. and stuff. So I said, you uh, Jupp please, can we just do one thing? that we have the same numbers in the midfield. As they do. Because I knew yeah. that I'm physical stronger than them. Yeah, yeah. Xavi, Iniesta, yeah, yeah. whoever came there. But same when we, when we faced Spain. I was always thinking, why? Why, why do they dominate us so much? Just it has only tactical reasons. Because yeah. I can run faster than Xavi. I can, yeah. He's has a very good first contact and passing, yes, but I can... Yeah, match him I, in all the other areas. I can 100% match him. Yeah. And... Um, so actually, then I said, okay, just leave the two centre backs free when they have the ball. Everyone come into. Put Mansukic a little bit back. Yeah. We are fine. Let them come. <laughs> yeah. Then they came, they lost the ball, and we killed them. Yeah. Uh, Ribery, Robin. I was in the stadium that night. I did the game. Yeah? Yeah. Did you see how Ribery and Robin yeah, yeah. ran back? Yeah. You know that before the game, I told them, look, they were good, eh? Ribery and Robin together. If, if you together, yes. Oh my but God. if they were not together, like not friends. Oh, were they, <laughs> because, were they not friends? Ah, they had sometimes this. Problem I can see that though. When Arian came inside, 
and he tried to shoot the ball and left. Frank was completely open. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's like selfish type. Yeah, yeah. Frank I get grew that. up on the street, like, you know, like, you have two <laughs> circumstances to see the ball. But when they played together, they were by far oh. the best. But I told them before the game, or like even in the season before, I told them, look, guys, when David Alaba and Philip Lam make a tackle in the back, do they get applause from the stadium? They said, no. I said, okay, what do you think if you two, when you run back and you make a tackle, what do you think? Is the stadium giving you applause or not? And they said, oh, well, maybe. Well. So then they, because they didn't, they didn't have that in the beginning when they turned oh, around. It wasn't natural for him yeah. to run back, was and it? When, and when they ran back and when the, uh, when the duels against Dani Alves or yeah. Jordi Alba, stadium give applause. I was standing there. I was on the field literally like... <laughs> like <laughs> and, and that gave them attention. Yeah. And that's what they needed, you know? Yeah. Like, it was tough. Sometimes it was tough for me because I got the ball. Arian said to me, play the ball to the right. In <laughs> halftime, I walk in the, in, the, in the tunnel to the dressing room. Frank Ribery comes to me and says, hey, please pass the ball to the left side. <laughs> so pass the ball to the left side on the field. And Arian said, hey, pass the ball to the right side. It was always like, but they wanted to have the ball. Yeah, and the that's, com competitive. Exactly. That's what I'm missing sometimes when I watch Sané or other players. They're yeah. not always ready. They're not, they're not, um, they're not getting angry. No. Like, in a natural way, yeah, yeah. you know? They haven't got the same personality or character. Correct, correct, yeah. correct, correct. And they have to learn to be a little bit more bad, in a yeah. way. You don't have to do, like, Sané got a red card against Austria. You don't do that, but yeah. just show, like, that you're there, and yeah. you, you know? And that's what, uh, what uh, that is, was uh, Frank and Arjen had. Yeah. And that was amazing. Yeah. And, but we lost it then a little bit, all these things, you know? Yeah. And that's the set, I think. And I yeah. think it, 100% we would have had also success at United with yeah. the pieces there. But... Oh, that's a good place to finish. Mm. We would have had success. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know.